Hear now a tale of a city once blinded by walls built from fear of what lay outside it, where a sickness did fester and a doctor resigned to uncover the fate of those left behind. Before we begin, I just wanted to say that Plague Road's writer and producer, Conrad Zimmerman, formerly worked at Clickist as an editor prior to the game's Kickstarter campaign. I also backed this project myself. Plague Road is one of those crowdfunding campaigns that looks great at the time, but when you go back and examine it after the fact, you can't help but notice the flaws. The game comes to us via Arcade Distillery, the same studio that brought Court of the Dead Underworld Rising to Kickstarter. They were asking for $250,000 for that project, a 2D side-scrolling strategy roguelike game based on Sideshow Collectibles' Court of the Dead property. Just under two months later, the company was back on Kickstarter with Plague Road, a 2D side-scrolling strategy roguelike game now asking for only $30,000. How were they able to turn around this new project so quickly? Why were they asking for relatively little money? And how good is the final game? Well, that's what we're here today to find out. Plague Road's Kickstarter campaign began on November 28th, 2016. It burst out of the gate with the big guns, delivering a trailer narrated by Jim Sterling. Sterling also played an alpha build of the game on his channel. There were a few issues, like the tall grass obscuring battlefields, but overall, the game looked great. The art is eye-popping, the gameplay looks smooth, the plot intriguing, and the world and characters seem well-developed. You would play as the mysterious plague doctor who abandoned their home, and is now on a journey along a dangerous road back. That home, however, an equally mysterious city, has been struck by the plague, an equally equally mysterious disease. You would start the game with nothing but a sword and a basic pistol, but as the game progresses, you would acquire a farm that would act as a staging ground for you and the companions you pick up along the way. You'd unlock more buildings on the farm that can grant you new abilities, and you'd get neat gear and better weapons. You start out in an area called the Plains before making your way to a forest, the outskirts of the city, and finally ending up in the city center itself. What I love about this Kickstarter campaign is that it does a great job of establishing the oppressive atmosphere of the game itself. It tells you all you need to know about the game without revealing too much. It gives you basic information about the plot and the characters, and it tells you about gameplay details like combat, the roguelike elements, and some abilities you'll unlock on the farm, but it doesn't go overboard. It's a somewhat minimalist approach that works because the game itself is equally minimalist in its design. My favorite thing about the game, and the biggest thing that got me to back it, was the art done by David North. It just looks so unique and not like anything we've ever seen in video games before. There are some funky colors going on here, and even more funky designs. I love how the Plague Doctor, him or herself, looks like a combination of a medieval Plague Doctor, a witch, and a knight. Then you've got the Tin Soldier, the Scarecrows with their gyrating hips and sad eyes, and don't ignore the trees, which all come complete with rib cages and are animated in ways that makes them look like they're dancing. But two things stood out about Plague Road's Kickstarter in a less positive way. The first is how quickly they turned this game around. Court of the Dead Underworld Rising was just on Kickstarter less than two months prior. Arcade Distillery had also released a beta on the PlayStation Network for a game called Death Tales, and they released the Vita game Mecho Tales in September. The website also says they're working on two more games right now, Manufactured Beauty and The Witch Trials. That's quite a lot of games in such a short amount of time for an eight-person team to make according to the Kickstarter page, seven if you don't include Jim Sterling, who's only a voice actor on Plague Road. When you stretch yourself that thin, the cracks are bound to show up everywhere, and coupled with Court of the Dead looming over it, those cracks are more than evident in Plague Road. According to Douglas Bogart, co-founder of Limited Run Games, who were publishing the physical copy of Plague Road, the game was mostly done by the time the Kickstarter campaign went live, and the $30,000 was mostly for fine-tuning. He even went so far as to say that the Kickstarter wasn't funding development of the game, but to pay an engineer to make sure it runs as perfect as possible. Needless to say, this wasn't met particularly well in the limited run forums. It seems possible that Plague Road is essentially a heavily modified and polished version of a prototype or an alpha or even beta for Court of the Dead. The gameplay and story look and sound so similar, it's not hard to imagine them swapping out the graphics and it would explain why they'd need somebody to come in and clean up or finish the code and iron out some of the bugs. There's nothing wrong with this at all. 
Chances are they spent a lot of money working on Court of the Dead only for its Kickstarter to fail, and Sideshow likely lost interest in the project. There's no point in letting the work you've done go to waste, so they repurposed it into their own IP. This happens all the time in game development, like Freedom Planet, which started as a Sonic fan game, or Halo Wars, which started out as a brand new IP by Ensemble Studios before it was turned to a Halo game. But there's no denying the optics look bad when you're pumping out so many games in such a short span of time with such a small staff. There's also Luke Bernards, the founder of Arcade Distillery, previous crowdfunding campaign. In 2013, he launched an Indiegogo campaign for a game called Imagination is the Only Escape, a game about a boy in the Holocaust. Its Indiegogo campaign raised only 5000 of its $125,000 goal. However, given Indiegogo's flexible funding rules, he got to keep the $5,000. The game still hasn't seen the light of day, and two controversies grew when Bernard said that Nintendo was afraid of the game's dark subject matter, he originally planned on releasing the game on the Wii U, and when after the campaign ended, Bernard refused to speak to backers or comment on the status of the game. I haven't been able to find any instance of him talking about the game since its Indiegogo campaign ended. Taking all of this into consideration, it's almost a minor miracle that Plague Road was funded at all. But now that the finished product is in our hands, is it any good? As much as it pains me to say this, Plague Road is not a very good game, a sentiment shared by many Kickstarter backers and Steam customers alike. Looking over the scant handful of reviews left on Steam, most of them are negative. The common sentiment is that the game feels unfinished, that it lacks polish and is ultimately boring, points that I do have to agree with. The polish definitely isn't there which speaks to how little money the team had to work with. The animations in particular are, well, there kind of aren't any animations. You have walking and attack animations, but that's kind of it. Anyone turning around just gets their character model flipped, enemies who die suddenly fade away the moment their health hits zero, lids to chests also fade away, and walking near a tree or a chest will have the Plague Doctor suddenly teleport behind or in front of it. I'm playing the PS4 version of the game, and the UI on the farm area bleeds off the screen, and there are no options to fix it. In fact, there are no options at all other than audio volume. And while I do love the art, I have to admit that it can be really hard to discern what's going on at times, as assets tend to bleed together. This isn't helped by the foreground objects or the trees and bushes that constantly litter battlefields. The tutorials are downright bizarre as well, as the game tells you the absolute basics of how to play, like moving left and right, and hitting button prompts to talk to characters, but for the more complicated features like how to use the farm or how combat works, there's no tutorial at all, you just have to figure that out yourself. A lot of Plague Road's core issues come down to that lack of polish. The biggest is that it doesn't feel balanced in any way. The Doctor is useless in combat, his attacks do hardly any damage, and he doesn't have much health either. But there are some RPG elements here, including the ability to recruit party members. You do so by wandering around levels and picking up survivors, more on that later. I found an engineer at the start of the game, and he has an attack that kills everything in one hit, sacrificing only a little bit of stamina, but stamina potions are everywhere, so it didn't really matter how much I attacked with him. With the engineer at my side, I was clearing out battles in seconds, partly because we only ever came upon one enemy at a time. The more survivors you pick up, the more people you can have in your party, but this also means that you'll be fighting more enemies. Theoretically, this is supposed to balance the combat, but all it really did was make battles longer and more tedious. Every character I came across had super powerful attacks that could kill in one or two hits. Eventually, I found a medic who could heal any damage characters take before they're even close to dying. As a result, my entire playthrough of this game was just wandering around looking for survivors and blasting through enemies in seconds. And these battles become a slog, because this might be the first game I've ever played where you get nothing out of the combat. There is a lot of combat in the game, but there's no reward for it. No XP, no items, as items are only found in chests, no weapons, no costumes, nothing at all. The only thing you get out of combat is the ability to keep moving forward. So you're better off trying to run past enemies as a conga line of more enemies follows behind you. But there's no incentive to explore levels either, 
as you'll only ever find chests containing health and stamina potions and the occasional survivor. Finding potions quickly loses its luster as you have a limited inventory and if it's full, any items you find in the chest vanish forever. Survivors, on the other hand, are pretty much useless once you get a decent party together. First, you have to free them, but in order to actually unlock them as party members, you have to go all the way back to the farm. And there's no way to get back to the farm other than traipsing back through the randomly generated levels that you have already been through. And enemies don't respawn either, so it is literally a walk in the park to get back. Once you do get back, you can see what class each of the survivors are and what skills they have. If you think that survivor is useless, then you can retire them to a number of buildings, at which point they'll instead act as sort of research points. The problem is that there are a lot of unlockable powers, and it takes as many as five or six survivors to unlock one thing, and they aren't that common in the wild, especially when you're using some of those survivors in your party. Maybe all of this is better in later levels, but I wouldn't know because I'm stuck. I'm in the first level and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I found this soldier who told me to find someone who was good with tools and another soldier. When I found the other soldier and an engineer, that first soldier went back to the farm and unlocked a new building, but not a new level. So then I just wandered around the first level for about an hour, walking in circles over and over again trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Eventually I just gave up and looked online, but I couldn't find anything useful there either, other than the reviews from earlier. Is this a bug or are you supposed to walk around blind for hours until you you stumble upon the next level. Honestly, I don't care at this point. I'm so bored by just endlessly walking around in circles, tearing through enemies in seconds, and having to constantly backtrack all the way to the farm that I'm just not interested anymore. I feel like all of these issues could have been easily fixed if Arcade Distillery just had a little more money and spent a little more time on the game. Obviously, they weren't in a position to do so, and as a result, the game suffers. It really does feel like you're playing an early beta for what could eventually become a much better game. If they just tweaked the difficulty, gave you some incentive to fight the enemies, or made the story more involved because even Jim Sterling chewing the scenery doesn't make it very interesting, players would have something to latch onto. But as it stands, Plague Road just feels empty and soulless. Out of the wilds the people did come to a place of clean water and bright shining sun. Through mutual toil they soon ascertained that each had a gift that would keep them sustained. As the people did prosper, others took heed, seeking the place so they too might succeed. Through the ages a multitude followed the call, and the great city came to encompass them all. A lot of people were bringing up Darkest Dungeon during the Kickstarter campaign, and the comparisons, at least on a superficial level, are pretty obvious. But there couldn't be a bigger difference between Darkest Dungeon's development and Plague Road's. Darkest Dungeon raised five times as much as Plague Road, that's true, and that's not something you should dismiss lightly. But developer Red Hook Studios took time to develop Darkest Dungeon, put it on early access, and get player feedback on it. Compare that to Arcade Distillery, who are pumping out games left and right, there's a clear difference in philosophy. I'm not saying Arcade Distillery doesn't care or that they're trying to cash in. Kickstarter backers and Steam reviewers are doing plenty of that on their own. But looking at how quickly Arcade Distillery went from Court of the Dead's Kickstarter in October 2016 to Plague Road's Kickstarter in November, Death Tales release in March 2017, Plague Road's release in May, now Mecro Tales, which just released in September, and two more games on the way, it's hard not to think that they're churning games out way too quickly without giving them the time they need. That's four games in ten months, plus two more on the way, which would be ridiculous even for a AAA developer. Spend that time working on, finishing, and polishing one great game, not flinging all your ideas at a wall at once and seeing what sticks. And I know that money is a factor, but they raised 55 grand on Kickstarter. I'm not sure how much money they actually had left after Kickstarter's cut, taxes, and physical rewards. Let's say around 40,000? That's not much for a game, but some indie developers don't even have a fraction of that, and they spend years working on their games, spending their own time and money on it. But it's easy for me and for all of us to criticize when we're on the outside looking in. The bottom line is that while Plague Road had a great Kickstarter campaign, complete with a good initial run and some detailed updates afterwards, the game itself just isn't very good.
If you enjoyed this video, you might want to head over to clickus.com where I've posted a follow-up article talking about how hard this script was to write given my ties to one of its developers, Conrad Zimmerman. I've also been reading Jason Schreier's Blood, Sweat, and Pixels book lately too, which gives some great insight into how difficult game development is. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be promoting our stuff, not his. Um, give us money on Patreon. Please, please, also please, yeah.